This is the definitive comparison of DJI's new wireless microphone system and the Rode Wireless Go 2. We're going to dig deep, tons of detail, no time to waste, so let's get stuck in. Stuart Caddo here, pleasure to talk to you as always. As you can see, I'm recording on the Rode Wireless Go 2 and the new DJI microphone. These are the transmitters and both of them record internally, backup tracks if you like, or just can be used as external sound recorders without the receiver system. We have omnidirectional microphones in both of them and internal memory and internal battery. So we're using them in this field recorder state. I'm not taking it through a camera preamp or a sound recorder or through a phone or anything like that. We just want a clear comparison of the two systems here without any third party gear muddying the waters. And to jump ahead, both of them sound absolutely fantastic. So in terms of audio quality, you're going to be very happy with either of these systems. This video is broken into three sections. In the first section, we're going to look at some features that are unique to the DJI system. It is a newer product, and as a consequence, there's some functionality in there that the Rode Wireless Go 2 simply doesn't have. So we can't really compare it. In the second section, we're going to make a comparison of all the things that can be compared. And in the third section, we're going to look at some tests to see how these microphones perform in different scenarios. There are timestamps in the description below, so you can jump ahead if you want. And as with any product review or comparison, I don't know what your needs and your wants are. I don't know what your priorities are. So it's hard for me to say, for example, that the DJI system is better because it has a charging case. Maybe you don't care about that charging case, for example. So I'm going to give you lots of information to help you make up your own mind. Full disclosure, DJI sent us their wireless microphone system, Rode did not, we paid for it with our own hard earned cash. But I'm not here to promote either of these products, I just want to give you information. We don't even have an affiliate link with the DJI microphone system, so we're making no money from this whatsoever and they have no input in this video either. DJI is offering is newer and therefore it has some functionality the Rode Wireless Go 2 does not. Most visibly we get this hard shell charging case. There's a 2600 milliamp battery built into that case that can charge the two transmitters and the receiver twice. Depending on your use case for your microphones, this can be tremendously useful. One of the things that we did in the past was film weddings. Now, not only are you transporting these little devices from A to B, so the shell keeps it nice and safe, but you're charging as you go. Without a case like this, you're left charging two Rode Wireless Go 2 transmitters and a receiver via USB-C. That's three separate devices that need charged with three separate power sources. In a studio environment with power sockets everywhere, that might not be such a big deal, but out in the field, this charging case is really, really useful. With both these systems, the transmitters and the receivers are already paired, but if you did lose your connection for some reason, it is pretty easy to repair it with the Rode Wireless Go 2, but the DJI charging case takes it one step further. It's also a pairing device. As soon as you drop the two transmitters and the receiver in there, they repair essentially. Taking a look at the receivers, the DJI mic has a beautiful touchscreen from which all of the parameters of both the receiver and the transmitters are controlled. By comparison, the Rode receiver is controlled by its three buttons. Whilst it's not as contemporary approach as the DJI system, they're perfectly functional and they get the job done, but unfortunately they don't get the entire job done. To access full control of the receiver and the transmitter parameters, we need to use the Rode Central app, which is available both on your computer and your phone. It too is perfectly functional and gets the job done, but ultimately being able to control every single parameter of your transmitters and your receiver from the touchscreen on a receiver is a far superior approach. A really nice feature on the touchscreen is when you open the case, you're able to instantly see your battery levels for your two transmitters and your receiver. In addition to that, you're able to see the remaining internal memory left on those two transmitters. Let's talk about individual gain control of the two transmitters. On DJI system, via the touchscreen on the receiver, we can control the gain levels of the two transmitters independently. This is huge. If you're doing an interview and one person is talking really loud and one person is talking quietly, you can set appropriate gain levels for both of those transmitters. By comparison, the Rode Wireless Go 2 does not give us independent gain control of its two transmitters. The gain level is adjusted simultaneously on both of those transmitters via the receiver. Added to that, the receiver does not have gain control. So we just have this global gain control of the transmitters and the receiver combined. By comparison, the receiver on the DJI system also has gain control. So we can make a global adjustment, for example, if we're connected to a camera and we need to turn the levels down a little bit to cope with a hot preamp that, in our case, the Panasonic GH5 has, we can make that global adjustment. 
Given how important it is to set your audio levels properly to avoid clipping while you're recording, having this extra flexibility of independent gain control of your two transmitters plus an additional gain control on your receiver is very, very valuable. DJI has brought us some real innovation in terms of connectivity, particularly to smartphones. We have these little click-in adapters that go into your receiver so you can directly connect your receiver to your iPhone or your Android smartphone. This is a really neat system because rather than having to find a bracket with a cold shoe mount for the receiver that also holds your phone, you can just plug the receiver straight into your phone. It also does away with the need for that cable connection between your receiver and your phone. Now in the case of an iPhone, things are a little bit complicated because you need an MFI cable, a made for iPhone USB-C to lightning cable. Don't do what I did and buy the cheapest one you can find on Amazon, it won't work. Definitely get the road one, you know it's going to work, but it does cost 20 to $25, give or take, so you've got to keep that in mind when you're comparing the price of these two systems. Sticking with the unique characteristics of the DJI system, if you want to transfer your internal recordings from a transmitter to your computer, simply connect it by way of a USB cable and it will recognize the transmitter as an external hard drive. Thereafter, you can just drag and drop those files, delete them individually, copy them all across to another hard drive, do whatever you want as you would an external hard drive. Now this might sound kind of obvious if you've never used a Rode Wireless Go 2, but if you want to get your files off a Rode transmitter, you make that USB connection, then you go into the Rode Central app, you pick every individual file one by one, and then you export those files with your chosen settings and they are saved accordingly. I'm not going to lie, this is a pretty cumbersome way of doing things. Added to that, there's no bulk export option, so you can't just select them all and then export according to the settings you've chosen, and you can't delete individual files either. Depending on your use case scenario, the impact of this could range from mild inconvenience to absolutely maddening. If you're a wedding filmmaker and you come back with two transmitters filled with six hours of audio, you don't want to be sitting there one by one going through those clips and exporting them. We've discussed pretty much all of the features that are unique to the DJI system, but in the interests of fairness, are there any features that are unique to the Rode Wireless Go 2 system that DJI does not have? The most valuable feature I could find in that respect is the built-in pad in the Rode Wireless Go 2 system. Pad stands for passive attenuation device. It's a way of essentially compressing the signal if things get very, very loud. A little bit like a limiter, you could say. Now obviously the implementation of that has to be good for it to have any value. And I've done a fair few tests and I think the pad is indeed very, very valuable. We'll show you that in part three, but suffice to say the DJI system has neither a pad nor a limiter in its settings. Now I'll also show you in part three that there's no need to have clipping in either of these systems. If you set your gain correctly and perhaps use the pad in the case of the Rode Wireless Go 2, you're not going to get clipping audio. Another nice feature that sits within the Rode Central app is the ability to look at the waveform for the audio that you've captured through the receiver into your camera, for example, and see automatically if there are any dropouts in that waveform. These are, after all, wirelessly transmitted audio signals, so there's a risk of interference. And not having to sit and look through a two-hour interview, for example, to see if there are any dropouts and having some visual depiction instead so you know where to use your backup track is very valuable. The only other feature I could find is that the Rode Wireless Go 2 gives you the option of recording compressed audio, therefore giving you much longer recording times on the internal memory inside your transmitter. If you record compressed audio, then you'll enjoy about 40 hours or so record time on the internal memory inside your transmitter. The DJI system doesn't offer compressed audio recording. Instead, we move to the next level, which is 24-bit uncompressed audio capture. The DJI transmitters have eight gigabytes of internal storage and can capture 15 hours of uncompressed 24-bit audio. By comparison, the Rode transmitters can capture around seven hours of uncompressed audio. Now, they don't actually state what their internal memory is, but it's pretty clear there's about four gigabytes there, give or take. Both systems break long recordings down into 30 minute chunks and when the internal memory is full, things cycle back to the start and the original files are overwritten. So be sure to copy your files across regularly to avoid any lost data. Okay, we've crossed over into a comparison of the features that these two systems have in common. So let's move into part two now and dig a little bit deeper. As you know, both systems provide us with two transmitters and one receiver. If we look at the transmitters for a second, both of them weigh roughly the same, but the DJI transmitter is significantly smaller. All else being equal, smaller in my opinion is better. It makes it easier to hide whether it's up on a shirt collar or whether it's in your pocket and there's a lav mic coming out. Smaller is better, it's more discreet. 
Speaking of discretion, the high gloss and liveried finish of the wireless Go transmitters doesn't exactly scream at discretion. And ever since they came out with the original wireless Go, I did wonder, wow, that's a little bit uh, conspicuous, shall we say, if you see it clipped onto someone's shirt. Now, countering my assumptions on that, I think that could be one of the reasons for the success of this product, because we see YouTubers and influencers using these microphones and we go, oh, that's cool, I'll get one of those. So. I have nothing but praise for Rode and for their system. I just wonder if now might be the time to just tone it down a little bit with the high gloss branded finish. That one is very much a personal opinion, so you are of course welcome to disagree. Because the clip on the DJI transmitter is metal, combined with a little magnet that's provided, we have some magnetic mounting options that are genuinely useful. For our most recent YouTube videos, I've been using this little tripod with the DJI transmitter magnetically attached to a little ball head mount at the top. Finally, the little magnet doubles as a stand if you want to sit the transmitter upright on a table. As you know, one of the best features about both of these systems is the ability to record a backup track internally to the storage inside both of these transmitters. Perhaps learning from the journey that Rode has been on in this respect, the approach taken by DJI is somewhat more refined. We have a dedicated start-stop record button on the transmitter. Let's say you have the receiver connected to your camera, for example, and you are transmitting audio wirelessly to your camera. You want a backup track, you press record on the transmitter. It doesn't start automatically, you need to remember to do that if you want a backup track captured. Thanks to an update, we basically have the same functionality on the Rode Wireless Go 2, only it's a little bit more clunky because we have to get our settings dialed in in the Rode Central app. If we set our record mode to always, then when we switch on the road transmitter, it automatically starts recording, irrespective of what's going on with the receiver and your camera. Alternatively, set your recording to backup and it will only start recording when the receiver is switched on. In terms of the windshields, both transmitters employ a twist lock mechanism to ensure they don't fall off. A nice touch with the road system is we get three windshields, so a spare. With the DJI system, we get two. Wrapping up on the transmitters, the Rode transmitter has a stated battery life of 7 hours versus 5.5 hours for DJI. Now, I haven't done the tests myself because I think both those numbers are perfectly workable and perfectly acceptable, but I have seen it said that if you're capturing uncompressed audio on the Rode transmitter, which is the same uncompressed audio you're getting with DJI, then the battery life falls to, let's say, 6.5 hours. So maybe on an apples and apples comparison, you're looking at 6.5 hours versus 5.5 hours. Let's talk about the receivers. As we've already established, the DJI receiver has this beautiful touchscreen which brings complete functionality to both the transmitters and the receivers. I think it's a huge benefit of the DJI system. It's impossible to get away from that. If we're comparing with the button system on the Rode receiver, which has to be combined with the functionality of the Rode Central app. Added to that, we have another big win for the DJI receiver, and that is a dedicated 3.5 millimeter headphone monitoring jack. The Rode receiver does have a 3.5mm output that can be used for headphone monitoring, but in all likelihood that's going to be occupied with the TRS cable connecting that receiver to your camera. As a consequence, if your camera itself doesn't have a headphone monitoring jack, then you could find yourself stuck here. I tried a third-party adapter to see if I could convert the USB-C into a headphone jack, but I couldn't get it to work. If, however, you are using the USB-C to connect the receiver to a computer or a phone, for example, then it will free up the headphone jack for monitoring. One thing I noticed is that the headphone monitoring levels on the Rode receiver are very quiet. By contrast with the DJI receiver, the levels are quite acceptable and there's also a volume adjustment for your headphones in the settings. Both these receivers give you the option of recording the audio from your two transmitters separately as independent mono channels. This way, when we bring the files from our two transmitters into our editing software, we can play around with the levels, EQ, etc. independently on those two files. Alternatively, you can record both those transmitters in stereo or merged as Rode calls it and you'll get one output file from both those transmitters. You can also take advantage on both these systems of the stereo recording option to capture a safety track if you're using one transmitter. The first track will be recorded at the audio levels you set on your transmitter or your receiver or your camera depending on how you've got things set up. But you also have a safety channel on the other stereo track at a lower decibel level to give you even more protection if you had things coming in a little bit hot on the transmitters. Both receivers allow you to mute your transmitters, but DJI takes it one step further with the touch screen again. You can mute the transmitters, you can start stop recording, you can format your transmitters, and most importantly, you can control the gain levels of the two transmitters independently. 
A small but useful feature in the Road Central app is the ability to dim the LED lights on the road transmitters. Unfortunately, you can't switch them off, which could be useful in certain situations. Now, unless I've missed something on the DJI transmitters, there's no way to dim the lights and there's no way to switch them off. The Rode Wireless Go 2 has a stated line of sight range of 200 meters. DJI claims to give us 250 meters. Let's jump outside to see how they do in a real world scenario. I'll spare you the workings and get straight to the results. I clipped the transmitters to the collar of my t-shirt on the front of my body. Even when I was turned away from the receiver with my body blocking the signal, both of them did very well up to 50 meters. From 50 meters to 150 meters, both of them struggled when I was walking away from the camera with my body blocking the signal, but both of them gave clean signals when I was facing the camera. If I had to pick a winner, there were less dropouts from DJI as I was walking away from the receiver, but ultimately as I was facing the cameras, both systems did well. Let's have a quick listen at 150 meters and then we'll crack on. How's that going when I face you? Can you hear me? Can you hear all these cars going past? Do we have a nice clear signal? at 150 meters. What if I turn around? One, two, three, four. How's this signal 150 meters away? What if I turn around? I wouldn't have thought it'd be working now. 150 meters away. Can you now? I wouldn't have thought so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How's that going? 150 meters away. A quick word on export formats. As you know, both of these systems capture 24-bit uncompressed audio. There are no export formats for the DJI system. You simply connect the transmitter to your computer and copy the files across. It's a simple transfer. No export takes place. Unfortunately, with the Rode system, we have to go into the Rode Central app, select the files, and pick an export setting. Now, you can export as compressed audio, kind of MP3 style. You can export uncompressed, which is the native file format that we captured at, or you can export at 32-bit float. Just to clarify, the fact that you can export at 32-bit has no bearing on what you captured at. It's like an upscaled resolution, essentially, an upscaled version of that 24-bit audio. You're still exporting 24-bit audio at the end of the day. Now, Rode themselves say that this could give you some benefits if you're working with a DAW, a DAW, a digital audio workstation environment. I don't have any personal experience of that, so you can let me know if that is beneficial. And it also opens the door for future updates of the system. So they, they leave the door open that maybe one day these mics will capture 32-bit float audio, but at the moment they don't. So don't make that confusion. Both of them capture audio at 24-bit uncompressed. We're recording internally to these two transmitters via the omnidirectional mics that are built in. Now to get a similar recording level from both devices we have very different gain settings. On the Rode Wireless Go 2 we have minus 30 dB with the pad on, so we're going for maximum protection against clipping basically because I'm right close up against the microphones. Now by comparison the levels aren't quite as hot on the DJI mic, so we're on plus 12 dB, the complete opposite, we've got the transmitter turned up to plus 12 decibels so things don't come in too quiet. How does it sound? Do they both sound quite nice? I suspect they both sound quite rich. Let's listen to the room tone and see how much hiss there is with these levels. This is by no means a sound treated room. There is a little bit of echo in here and this light that's right up close and personal has a very audible fan noise coming from it. I'll raise the volume of my voice now, do a clipping test. See what happens if I get dead excited. Oh, I'm dead excited. We're talking about microphones. Oh, is it clipping? I wonder if it's clipping. It looks like it's clipping there on the levels. Is the pad protecting us on the Rode Wireless Go 2? And do I have the levels a little bit too hot on the DJI mic? I'll raise the volume of my voice now, do a clipping test, see what happens if I get dead excited. Oh, I'm dead excited, we're talking about microphones. Oh, is it clipping? I wonder if it's clipping. It looks like it's clipping there on the levels. Is the pad protecting us on the Rode Wireless Go 2? And do I have the levels a little bit too hot on the DJI mic? Same test with the pad switched off on the wireless go to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I can't believe how excited I am about microphones. Is it clipping more this time because I don't have the pad on on the wireless go to? What's clear to me from these tests is that both systems are very accommodating when it comes to unexpectedly loud noises. Even though we're clearly seeing the levels go into the red on both receivers, the audio tracks are still quite good and the level of clipping is not that bad. 
With both of these devices, we get a really nice clean audio recording. So if in doubt, dial those levels all the way back and you can boost the sound levels in post. Even if you have to make significant gain adjustments in post, we found that it doesn't introduce unacceptable levels of hiss into the recording. I'll do a quick test of that here. Let's imagine I'm a, a groom at a wedding ceremony. I take the so-and-so to be my lawful wedded wife. I'm whispering because I'm emotional. I'm a bit embarrassed. There's lots of people looking. Oh my goodness, you get that sound recording back. What am I going to do with that? I'm literally speaking about as quietly as I can right now. Nice and close to the microphones, but we're going to have to boost those levels in post. Let me show you that you can do that without introducing too much hiss. I'll do a quick test of that here. Let's imagine I'm a, a groom at a wedding ceremony. I take the so-and-so to be my lawful wedded wife. I'm whispering because I'm emotional. I'm a bit embarrassed. There's lots of people looking. Oh my goodness, you get that sound recording back. What am I going to do with that? I'm literally speaking about as quietly as I can right now. I'm nice and close to the microphones, but we're going to have to boost those levels in post. Let me show you that you can do that without introducing too much hiss. We've been going for maximum audio quality here, so I've been speaking really close to these microphones. Because they're omnidirectional, if I turn them around, things should still sound pretty good. The only thing is, if I put them further away, that's about three feet now, about arm's length, give or take, there will be a noticeable deterioration in the clarity of that audio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you really wanted your microphone this far away, you'd benefit from a shotgun microphone instead of using the omnidirectional microphone built into the transmitter. And of course, you can plug in microphones into those transmitters. Let's try a different test and simulate what it would be like if these were down here, let's say, clipped onto my shirt. So we're chatting away, the microphone's a little bit lower down, my audio's coming out this direction, but the microphone's are down here. So yes, microphones are great. We love talking about microphones. How do they sound? Is there much difference between the two? So yes, microphones are great. We love talking about microphones. How do they sound? Is there much difference between the two? As you've seen, both of these systems capture fantastic audio. So in terms of the primary function of these devices, you're going to be very happy with both of them. They're super impressive, both of them. DJI unquestionably brings some more functionality to the table that makes it a more enjoyable user experience and also a better user experience. I think that one is hard to argue, but it is kind of personal and down to your own individual use case scenario. So do leave your comments below. Very interested to hear your thoughts and learn from your own experiences. I think I've covered pretty much everything, but if I've missed anything, do let me know and we'll see you next time.